Hello, welcome guys. My name is Emilio Santini here from the studio with my class, like we did it last year. And uh, welcome to you all from uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. So today I'm going to continue the demo that I did last time. Last time we did uh, a tumbler. I think we did a tumbler and <clears throat> one or two tops of a goblet. Uh, the goblet and this year we're gonna do feet and if we have time I show you how I make my feet and the way in Murano uh, we do the feet and also if I have time I'm gonna show you how to make the stem and again time allowing we're gonna make the whole stem and then put it together so uh, just for your information for my class information uh, because this is just the instructional demo um, I took the liberty of writing down on the whiteboard uh, the various parts of the goblet. I apologize for my drawings, they're not artistic, but uh, you'll understand. So starting from your, uh, from your left, uh, the top part in Italian is called bevante, B-E-V-A-N-T-E. -E. It comes from bere, drinking, so it's the drinking part of the cup. The transition part that there is between the uh, cup and the stem, and sometimes between the stem and the foot, in this case, I'm going to put it there, is called avoglio, A V O G L I O. Vo avoglio, we don't really know the origin of the word. Uh, voglio means uh, I want. So some people say it's got the same origin from uh, I want, but I don't think so. But I'm not uh, a scholar in the field. And then the stem. It's called gambo. Gambo comes directly from gamba, that means leg. But that's what we call it, the stem, but the male uh, side. And the foot, we, uh, we use it the same identical word that, we use in, in, that you use in English. The foot is called piede. In Italian, piede means foot. In Venetian, uh, we drop off the last two letters and we say pie. That's how we call it in Venetian. Then going a little bit on detail, sometimes on the very top of the goblet, there is a thread. And again, we use the same word, thread. We, we say the word filetto. That means exactly thread. And the thread can be applied on the very top of the goblet or on the very edge of the foot. But it can also be applied other thread in the middle of the cup but, or in the middle of the foot. In that case, we still call them threads. Uh, then in between, in the stem, and again, I apologize for my drawings, there can be various discs as a, uh, fancy features. Uh, the discs are called siea. Uh, siea is a Venetian word. This is S-I-E-A, and is an F-L in there as in pronunciation. So siea, and those are discs. Uh, siea come from an old Venetian word there is a, a loza, lozenge, you say? Lozenge. Lo, it, may, it means lozenge. Uh, in the old time in Venice, the apothecary make those lozenge for uh, medical purposes. So in Murano, when they started making goblet and making discs as a, on their stems, uh, they didn't know what word to use, and so they decided to use the same word, the Venetian word for lozenge, that is a siea. Then uh, a thread on the <coughs> side of the cup or on the side of the foot or on the side of the elaborate stem, uh, a thread that is pinched or twists, is called moriza. That's what we call a moriza. Uh, I know that in the United States there's a little bit of confusion. They, conf they mixed up uh, Sierra with moriza. So they change, but the real way, the real way, the way that we use it in Venice is that Sierra is the disc and Moriza is the pinched or twisted thread. Okay, having explained to you the various parts of the goblet, now we're gonna, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna show you how uh, I make my feet. Uh, so I'm gonna start uh, making some mistakes, making a common mistakes that a novice usually uh, would do. Okay, so give me a second, I'll turn the torch on. I'm working with a Carlisle. Uh, you can work with any torch. Uh, 
the fact that I'm doing it with a Carlyle doesn't mean you have to do it with a Carlyle. But here we have only Carlyle, so. Um, I think I covered our two pool points last time. But just for uh, your general knowledge, I'm going to explain it to you again and for my class as well, because this is only the third day of the of two week class. So I'm using a 38 millimeter, uh, 2.5, no, 2.2 wall thickness uh, uh, tubing, and I think this is Cymax that comes from the uh, Czech Republic. So, feet. So, I, my left hand is always on the top. My right hand is always on the bottom. Uh, the way that I do it is the way that I was taught. Other schools do it differently. Uh, the German school use uh, both hands underneath, and they have both holes open so they can blow one side, then cap it and blow on the other side. Uh, but the American and the Italian school use the uh, left hand on the top, right hand on the bottom. If you are left hand, then naturally it's the opposite. Okay. So, I don't use a very, very strong flame. I use a more softer flame. And uh, all my work, or most of my work when I do tubing, is done four or five inches away from the face of the torch. So I work more or less in this area, all right? Uh, rotation. Some people rotate one direction. Other people rotate away from me. Other people rotate, uh, uh, tour, uh, they, uh, rotate toward themselves, and some people go back and forth. Doesn't matter, as long as which one you use, one or the other one. As long as you have every single point of the circumference at the same temperature, you can use one or the other method. Otherwise, if there is a hot spot, the point pulls out of center. Okay, so I'm going back and forth. So my goal is to get every single point of the circumference at the same temperature, right? So how do I judge that? Just uh, looking at how the glass glows. If it glows uniformly all the way around, means it's all at the same temperature. Now what happens? What do I do if I have a hot spot? If I see the one spot glows more than the rest, I come out of the flame. I wait until everything cools down, becomes solid, and then I go back in. Okay? Don't stay in the flame. If you stay in the flame with a hot spot and stand and pull it, it pulls off center. Okay? So let's do it. Okay. You notice that when I'm stretching the points. I will turn back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And again, there are three different ways of doing it. You can go back and forth, back and forth. That's more or less the way that we do it in Murano, in Venice. Uh, other people rotate uh, constantly when they stretch the point one direction. Other people stretch uh, and turn the other direction. No difference as long as you pull straight points. Um, I also want to point out that there are some people that uh, don't use the point pulling. They use the method uh, that comes directly from uh, scientific glass blowing. That is, uh, they have a, a tubing like this that is open. They heat it up and then they lower it with their, when it's hot, they press it down and lower the diameter and make it smaller, and then they have a pre-prepare another tube, and they attach it. And so they have their pre-prepare between quotation point. Uh, that technique comes uh, directly from scientific glass blowing. I'm not a scientific glass blower. I learned differently. But you can use other method as long as you achieve uh, uh, the, same, the same beautiful goal. You can use other of them. So next step is. Uh, Cutting open one end, fire polish it gently. So what did I use for cutting? There was this, this magic thing that I have in my hand. It's just a piece of a carborundium. It's a piece of grinding stone uh, where you sharpen your knife. Uh, you can buy a little bar of it at a store for, uh, uh, I don't know, five bucks. 
and uh, it will last you for the rest of your life. This is very good for something that is very thin, scratch and break. But if it is something very thick, like uh, heavy wall pieces, you use a, a thank you. You use a, a carbide uh, steel and scratch it and break with that. This is good only for small pieces. So next one is uh, I'm going to create two constrictions on the left and on the right. Uh, it is exactly what, paper, uh, what uh, furnace workers do. So I do the same thing. So I work under the flame. Another thing that I want to emphasize that uh, most of the time, no all the time, but most of the time, I approach the flame from underneath. Because I'm approaching from underneath, I know where the glass is touching the flame. From the top, I'm only guessing. So I approach it from underneath or from the side in certain cases. There are a few cases that you do it from the top. And we'll talk about later. So I go in the flame. I caress, actually, the glass with the flame. And I let it shrink down by itself. And in doing that, it no, it's not only reducing in diameter, but it also becomes a little bit thicker. Okay, and then I go on top of my torch and roll on the blade. So why do I have a blade? Because uh, I cannot use jacks. A furnace worker would do this. But since this is a very long, when this is soft, having a long arm, there's a lot of uh, lever, and this one will go up and down. I would not allow me to keep it centered. So this is the surrogate for the blade of the jack. OK? Do the same on the other side. And in doing this, I also recenter my points. OK? There's the second one. This going down in diameter and becoming thicker. Come out, let it cool down for a few seconds, and then go back, go on top of the blade, and rotate. And there you are. You will notice later that when I'm going to use my diamond shears to cut it off, I go exactly in that groove that I just created. Okay. Now I got my glass. Uh, gather in the middle that is uh, determined by the two constrictions. Now I'm going to heat it up again and I'm going to blow it. I'm going to blow it very slowly and push quite hard because my final form for opening a foot is going to be this. It's going to be a squatty shape. Okay. At the furnace, they, start, they use normally round shape. At the uh, in this shop, or well, in this shop, uh, the torch is much easier for us to use the squatty shape. Okay. So let's heat it up. And again, you can go one direction, the other direction, or back and forth. Okay. Naturally, you can see, naturally, logically, or whatever you want to say, the width of the flame is uh, smaller than the gather that I have in the middle. So as I told you yesterday, you have two methods to two or three methods. You can go left and right, left and right, or you can go 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, or you can do a mixture of the two. Again, you can use any of those as long as you heat up everything uniformly. And again, I judge uh, everything by the amount of glow that there is uh, in the glass. So I know if it is uniformly heated, and I know if it's got the right temperature uh, by the glow. How do you know that? Well, it's just experience. And come out and blow very slowly and push. OK? So I didn't blow very much. It came out this big. Okay? You don't want to blow it very thin. If you blow it very thin, 
is very, very difficult to open it. Also because uh, this part here is going to be quite thin. There is the side. But the bottom part, that is the one you start opening, is much thicker. So at the beginning, when you start opening, everything works out the first uh, inch. But then when uh, the flame start hitting the part that is thinner, the part that is thinner just, just shrinks in and it starts folding over, okay? So you want to have as much as uh, uniform, uh, uniformity on the wall as you can, okay? So we got our basic bubble. Now out of this, there's going to be a foot. So I'm not going to put an avolio. I'm not going to put a ponty. I'm going to close the top and I'm going to open the foot uh, from this uh, point just to show you uh, what the common mistake is when you're opening a foot, the common of novices, OK? So let's close it. <coughs> oh, actually, I can, don't need to close it. It's already closed there. I don't need to close it there. So let's open it on the other side. Who watched this video uh, before? Not this video. Watch me on other videos before. Uh, they know that I don't use uh, um, the puff. What do you call that? The huh? No, the blow. No, the puff when you open it with the. Yeah, I don't flank cut basically. What I want uh, what I mean is that I don't heat it up, blow, and then flame cut it. To cut this open, I use diamond shears, directly from furnace work. Okay. So the diamond shear is a little bit tricky here because the furnace worker usually don't have this long of an arm. They have a teeny tiny uh, piece at the end. So they heat it up and no problem, it doesn't move. For me, it's different. If I do this, heat it up, and then let it go and try to put the diamond shear, see what happens, it starts moving. So to avoid that, you start to begin with holding the, uh, the uh, point in the middle where it balances, then you go in the flame, <clears throat> the flame softens up the constriction, and then you go down, hold it on a surface, roll it on the surface, and then back and forth, start constricting. Now it's solid, I can come up, I score it, and knock it off. And I should have a perfect hole, okay? And it's small. Why do I do it this way? <coughs> Excuse me, because well, first, because that's the way I learn. <laughs> but also, that if you do flame cutting, if you don't open a very small hole when you, uh, with the flame cutting, and you open it much, much bigger, it's very, very difficult to put a very fine thread around it. Having a small hole, you can put a thread that is a, a millimeter or two millimeter thick. And then when it opens, it stretches out and becomes very, very, very thin. It's the same identical process of furnace work. OK, so <clears throat> those are jacks. I'm going to wax them. And I'm going to use them just to open this a little bit. And now we're going to make the common mistakes, common mistake that uh, lamp worker, uh, novice lamp worker do. What they usually do, they know that if you apply heat, the glass softens. And if you spin in a round object that is softening, it spins out into a flat surface, into a foot. So what they do usually, they make their bubble. And another mistake that they do, they make their round bubble instead of making it uh, squatty. And they start rotating from the very beginning, OK? So if you rotate from the very beginning and start spinning fast from the very beginning, the foot will open, but you don't have any control at all. And the foot becomes uh, sometimes off-center, sometimes uh, flag. And most of the uh, lamp work can end up with something like this. Okay, And most of the time, this part here is not even round. So that's what commonly you, see, you, you commonly see. Uh, now, let's do a proper one. So I pre-prepare one bubble just to save you time and pain and watching me doing it again. And uh, this time, we're going to put a, an avolio on, the transition piece that is between the 
the foot and the stem <coughs> and the cup and the stem shaped like a bobbin. Did I pronounce it right? Perfect. Thank you, Steve. This is Steve and my assistant. Great assistant. So I melted off uh, the two, the um, point that I had. Now, of olio making. In this case, there are a couple methods, maybe three. Uh, two for sure. The one that I use come directly from furnace working. So I'm going to make uh, a disc and then with the first gather and then I apply another gather and the, the second gather, out of the second gather, I will obtain the little uh, curved cylinder and the other disc. Now, Cesare Toflo that you all know uh, as the best uh, lamp worker that there is in the world, does it a little bit differently. What he does is uh, he has uh, over here a rod that is about eight millimeter uh, thick in metal. So it has a metal rod welded on a base and that stands over here. He melts his glass of the avolio, uh, for the avolio, enough glass. And then with this molten, he creates a cylinder. Okay. He has a molten cylinder that he holds with the ponty with the point on the other side. And then when it's hot enough, he rolls up and down against the vertical rod. And the vertical rod creates a groove that is exactly the size and shape of the avolio. Okay. And in doing that, he achieves two things. He achieves a uh, um, velocity, that means he makes the, the avolio very quickly, and uh, uniformity. So every single one of his avolio have all the same curvature because he rolls against the same cylinder. Okay? Me, it's a little bit different. I do it freehand. So, and you see how I do it. So I'm going to get this hot. I'm going to pet it in. And then curve the side a little bit. Now, you have to be careful when you, when you curve the paddle, when you, when you angle the paddle and push it down, you have to be careful that the glass that is out over here doesn't touch the top of the bubble. Because if it touches it without fusing on it, you're going to have a cold seal. And if you have a cold seal, uh, this part here is going to crack and pop off. I think we talked about it earlier. So if you see that there is a cold seal, if you, did that, if you see that this part is touching, what do you do? You just lower the flame and melt it down. Okay, and then you can repaddle it. Okay, that's enough. Then you grab your ponty. This is a little bit too long. And with part of this, I'm going to gather glass, apply it on the, try to apply it on the center of it, push it in just gently, and then pull out gently. So when you pull out gently, it creates a slope. There is the F of the curvature that I need, OK? Now I'm going to melt glass on my right, uh, uh, on the right part of the rod. Gather it enough to create uh, the second uh, F of the avolio, the bottom part, the bottom shape, the, the disc shape. And then heat it up and again paddle it, okay? And then curve it just slightly. So in doing that, you do the second half. But as we said yesterday, the disadvantage is that here is curved and here is flat. So I need to push out that and create the curvature. How do you do that? You have two choices. You can have a little rod here, and you can roll against the rod and create the curvature. 
or you can do it the crazy way that I do it and use your jacks and use your back and forth and pull it out at an angle and push against the blade on top of my torch. Okay? And you're still going to create the curvature on the top. So you obtain the same thing. But you can have a, a, a little rod here and you go like Cesare does instead of vertical, horizontal, and you roll against it. A little metal rod. Now I'm going to point it. Now, for a novice, as I advised my class earlier, it would be better if you fuse the ponte on the top of the avolio while you're learning uh, so you don't drop it down by accidentally hitting it, uh, the ponte doesn't come off, or while you're taking this off with the diamond shears. Okay, I'm gonna ponte instead of... Uh... So a ponte is a cold connection, is a cold seal basically. You are. Vertical change hands. Now on the other side, heat it up. I'm going to heat up a little bit the face and the constriction. Okay. Then grab my diamond shears. Pull it out, and same that we did before. Roll back and forth. Now, I'm going to stop before I knock this off because I want to explain to you another thing. If I were to hit this over here to get this off, the impact would travel, and instead of detaching over here and breaking off over here, the ponty will come off because the impact travels, and the one that comes off is only the farthest one. If there is another ponty over here, this is the one that comes off. So what a furnace worker do in this case, the, the master holds the diamond shear here, and then there is an assistant with the tweezer that usually hits this part. I don't have an assistant, so all I do, but the assistant is doing other things at the moment. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, so usually by myself, so what I have to do, I can do this like Bill Gooderan usually does by himself, and it will work perfectly. Or I can find a hard surface and hit it against the hard surface. And that's what I normally, uh, normally do. I hit my, um, the end of my jacks. OK, so again, score it. And then I hold it here, and I hit my jacks, and it comes off. OK, another way to do it is uh, instead of hitting it, is uh, holding it tight and wiggle it. If you wiggle your uh, diamond shears, uh, nine out of 10, it comes off, okay? Now, how do I open my um, feet? To open your feet properly, there are, uh, again, two or three ways, okay? I'm gonna show you the easiest one. Uh, the easiest one is uh, similar to the one that I showed you first, that Unfortunately, uh, many people don't do it properly, but not exactly the same. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this uh, part of the foot from here to here very slowly. So I'm rotating in the torch, in the flame, slowly, but fast enough for the glass to open like this all the way to this point. And I do it very slowly. And so I can control it. If I see that it opens off a little bit, I can always go back with the paddle and fix it while I'm opening. This is all without tools. So I'm going to show you how to open it without tools. And at that point, when I have my glass uh, like this, I'm going to boost the flame and spin very fast and open the last uh, uh, few inches. So let's do it. OK. Oh, forgot one. Oh, well, I'll do it later. I'm doing the next foot. And again, I go back and forth. It can be one direction, the other direction. Okay. Look at the angle that I'm, I'm in the flame. It's about, what, 20 degree angle toward this uh, 
okay? So, and what I'm hitting now is uh, mostly the lip near me, and the buffer goes on the other lip. So, even later, when I'm spinning, fast or slowly, uh, the torch, the flame, needs to hit this, this um, part of the lip all the time. If you angle it too much and heat up the lip that is far away, uh, it'll never spin out properly because it's getting too cold. Okay? This is Pyrex. So, uh, <clears throat> so it's getting thicker on the lip. It's okay. You see how it's spinning open? Slowly, slowly. Now I get more flame over there. Now you can see it's a little bit off. I can work with gravity and also touch it a little bit. Okay. You should never spend too much time outside the flame because you lose the heat. You want to try to do as much as you can uh, all at once. Okay. See, this is control, 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 control. There you are. Now, I'm already open. This is a cup. It could be a cup. But what I'm going to do now, when I reach this point, I boost the flame. OK? And then I spin faster. OK? And there you are. You got your foot in no time. OK? It's not perfect, perfect, but at least I, huh? OK. There. Foot. Um, this is the easiest way to make a foot. Now I'm going to show you a, a flat foot. Now I'm going to show you a conical foot. And I'm going to show you also, because I forgot there, we're going to put a lip wrap around it. So the conical foot is the, uh, the one that I will use uh, first, uh, the one I would practice first. Uh, unfortunately, it requires the use of a tool. It requires use of jacks or uh, parchofi. Parchofi are just jacks with the graphite blades in our case. Forna's case is uh, uh, wooden. Um, or a reamer. If you don't have those, you can use a reamer, OK? So, but for all the people that are starting, a long conical foot is much, much easier than a flat foot, all right? So let's do it. So let's fix the other, the two ends as we did before. Sorry. Everything clear so far? No questions? My students are great. I understand everything immediately. Again, constriction. Oh, another thing I wanted to tell you is that this glass is uh, no super good glass. Uh, as you notice, the foot wasn't perfectly round. Um, because uh, when you rely only on spinning, the, the sphere needs to be perfect, perfect, cent perfectly centered, and the um, wall thickness needs to be perfect. Okay? If one side is a little bit thinner than the other side or thicker, the foot comes out a little bit off. It can be a little bit oval, a little bit square, a little bit triangular. Uh, if you want to invest uh, a little bit of money uh, and peace of mind, if you're making goblets uh, that would sell for a certain amount of money, uh, that they, you want them to be perfect, it's better if you use a shot glass, uh, but not a shot for an artistic shot. The best glass is the shot for a scientific glass blower is more expensive, but um, it saves you pain and suffering. Okay. And again, it's all, it also depends how much you're buying, because if you're buying just a, a length or a box or a case or two cases, it's got a center price. If you buy a lot of it, the price goes down, down to the equivalent of buying Cym uh, Cymax. All right, so now I'm going to make a longer cylindrical foot. So in this case, I'm not going to blow. 
I'm going to make a foot without blowing. Those are the easiest ones to make. I'm going to make it longer than what, probably I, what I probably need, but uh, you can make it a little bit shorter, so you use a shorter gather in the center. But it's the same process, OK? So I'm gonna, what I'm doing, I'm narrowing down this area and stretching it gently. Okay. It's like pulling a point, but I don't pull very much. Okay. And again, I remind, I remind you that I'm not blowing. I'm not gonna do any blowing, any, I'm not gonna expand this. So if you have a very good tubing, uh, the supposed bubble that is at the end is already perfect. You don't need to do anything. So let's put an avolio on this side, or a, just a ponty to be quicker. Oops, made a mistake. <laughs> oh, no, I got it right. Sorry. <laughs> I opened already. Never tell you one time I was doing a demo at a I started blowing, nothing happened. I was blowing on the wrong side in front of 200 people. <laughs> and nothing happened. And people said, what happened? I said, oh, <laughs> the hole is on the other side. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, clean your glass. Again, if we have time, we're going to make the stem and finish the cup. Otherwise, we're going to do it next time. So it's not an avolio, just a straight uh, rod. center. There we are. Now it's all fused on my left side. So <clears throat> when I try to detach the right part, I can just hit it and nothing's going to happen on there. Yeah. Okay. So you also notice that I push pull it out a little bit. Uh, why? Because uh, sometimes it's very difficult to get exactly there where the groove is. I, I have hard time because uh, this one's got a certain thickness. Okay. So uh, since it's difficult to get there, what I do, I don't only heat up um, the, uh, this part of the point. I also heat up a little bit that face and in stretching it out a little bit before I, I score it, I, I pull it out and it gives me enough space to go exactly on the groove. That's what you want. Unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't happen, but that's what your goal is. Okay, so there you are. Now I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. So stop for a second here, and uh, again, I explained to you, as I did yesterday, the diamond shears. One thing that I forgot is that when you clamp it down, you don't do this. You do it constant and uniform uh, squeeze, because if you do little, uh, what would you call it? Uh, yeah, clamping, cha cha? chop, chop, little chop. Uh, instead of having a round uh, area, you would have a square area because this is square. So you do tac, 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 you get square. So to keep it round, what you do, you 
close down uniformly while you're rotating back and forth. Okay. Chap. I didn't know that word. What? Champing. Thank you. In this case, I'm going to use my jacks, OK? Again, same angle, you see? What I'm going to do, I'm going to open it just a bit into a little cylindrical shape. So basically, I'm pulling out the lip into a cylinder. Usually, I don't open it more than this. Normally, it's a little bit less, but not bigger than this. And then I apply a stringer on the surface, on the edge over here. So as we said yesterday, Pyrex uh, doesn't flow like uh, soft glass. Uh, so in soft glass, you get your rod, the soft glass, you melt it, and then you got this nice big melt of uh, gather of glass, and you touch it at one point, and you start rotating, and maybe you roll it over twice, and then stretch it off, and uh, pull it off and detach it. Uh, Pyrex doesn't flow that well, because uh, it's uh, a short glass. It goes down too fast. So to get around it, you'll never be able to do that. You pre-make the uh, stringer, and the thickness of the stringer is the thickness of your lip wrap. And then what you do is just lay down on the side without stretching the stringer that you just prepare. So, and the fact that you open it in a little cylinder is because uh, you always put the lip wrap on the side. Furnace workers do exactly the same thing. They never put it on the front here. It's almost impossible to be able to put it perfectly over here. And, and again, as I said earlier, if you open a small hole, you can put even a thicker lip wrap. But then when you stretch it, it becomes thinner and thinner and thinner. So. Uh, if you look at any goblet that any glass blower made, even the most beautiful, ma most, the best master, and even, even Bill Gooderan, the lip wrap is always on the side. But when you got the cup there, uh, and you hold the cup in your hand like this one that I made earlier, you know, it looks like it is on the top, but it's actually not, it's actually not on the top, it's on the side. But the effect, the visual effect, is being on the top. Okay? And it's much easier life for us to put it on the side. Did I say too many words to say that? <laughs> Sorry. So uh, you have two ways, as I said to you yesterday. You can use this flame, or you can reduce it and go with a smaller flame. So if you are a novice, it's easier, and obviously I'm not using it as an insulting term. If you are a, more a beginner, you use this flame and you, because you have more control. Otherwise, after a while, you don't want to go stop what you're doing and lower the flame. You just leave the same flame that you had before and work under the flame and barely on the side. So I preheat this one, then I'm going to attach it, and then barely in the flame, I'm not doing anything, I'm just holding the, the rod. And the flame is fusing the rod, and I'm bending it over. Now, the trick, as I said yesterday, is the very end. As we said yesterday, the glass uh, Pyrex doesn't flow very well. So if you apply a lip wrap all the way around, at the very edge, I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's a little gap over there, right? So, because the glass doesn't fuse very well. So chisel does exactly the same thing. So when you reach the end, you just fuse it and pull it and push it in, and then trying to pull it out a little bit. So you fill in that gap, and then you grab your shears and cut off the excess. And in doing that, you try to leave there the same amount that there is uh, on, the other, uh, on the rest of the lip wrap. Sometimes you are successful, and everything is exactly the same thickness. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. But again, then you're going to stretch it. And those things uh, tend to disappear when you stretch it. Okay? Then what do you do? You pat it in a little bit. And then, uh, again, 
uh, if you, Cesare does an extra touch, Cesare usually does this. He squeezes it a little bit, okay? If you want to do it, do it. If you don't, doesn't matter. And again, in the flame. And now, in this time, I'm going to use the jacks. Uh, because this is very thick, I didn't blow it. So it would take a lot of flame to open it. And if I use a lot of flame, if I put it in the wrong position, the lip will become, lip will become thicker and thicker and thicker. I don't need that. It's already thick enough. So a little bit more flame. Hot. OK. Oh, need wax. Sorry. So go in. Now, we stop again to explain what I'm doing. Uh, some of you in the class already know it because I told them. Some other don't. Now, the way I, uh, the way I use my jacks is uh, pretty similar, pretty similar to the way they use jacks at the furnace. Now. Uh, Let's say that 70% is not on my jacks, but is on my left hand. So I want to be in control. I want the jack to open. I don't want the spinning and holding it with the jack in place to open it, like you would do with the reamer. Okay. So to open it with the jack, I have to push up or push down. Okay. If I push up with my jack, I need to counteract with my left hand. That's why my thumb is always on the top. See? OK. It doesn't look enough, but it is more than two and a half revolution what I'm doing like this. And in doing like this, I can push as much as I want, sorry, as much as I want with my jacks and open it as much as I want as long as I have the thumb in the, in the front. That's why I go back and forth. If you go only one direction and push up, there is a moment that, you know, you don't one direction, I push up, you have to open your hands. And so at that point, what do you have to do? You have to let it go with the push or the glass goes up. So uh, that's, how, that's why I use my thumb always on the top. And that's why I go back and forth, right? So let's do it. Let's open it. Uh, Many times I start with the jacks, metal blades, and then I finish with those. You can do one or you can do the other one. doesn't really matter. So nice and hot. I go in with my jacks. Another detail. I'm going to stop again. I should never stop. You should never stop when you are doing those things. Uh, as I said to the class, to you yesterday, and as I mentioned at the beginning, you always approach the flame from underneath or from the side because you know where it touches. This is one of the few cases that you stay on top of the flame. Why? Because the jacks are metal. And you don't want to overheat them. You don't want to toast them. You don't want to get them red, hot. Otherwise, you they lose the, uh, the, uh, the temper. Yes, thank you. They lose the temper. So what do you do? You get your piece hot. Go in, and then you move above the flame. So the jacks are always outside the flame, while the piece underneath keeps getting reheated, reheated, reheated. OK? That's what I do. Now, different is with those. With the graphite, you can go in the flame. And you're not afraid of burning them, because they withstand heat. So you go with the graphite, and there you are. Now, the more I raise my uh, angle with my right hand, the more the, the flares open until I get to the dimension that I need. And now you got your foot is almost perfect without any blowing. And it's a pretty nice foot. I mean, it doesn't need to be this tall. It can be this short. But for a beginner, this is a good uh, uh, starting point. I think we have uh, another 10 minutes. So instead of finishing the, the stem, I'm going to show you how to open a bigger, a bigger piece. Okay? 
Uh, so let's pull a point. Now, you saw me doing uh, smaller pieces, uh, relatively speaking, this size, a little bit bigger than this size, uh, or smaller, working on the side of the flame with my jack. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to open something bigger. Something bigger gets opened slightly differently, uh, particularly if you do it with the spinning, and you do it on the top of the flame, holding everything vertical. Okay? So like if you were opening a candy dish or something like that. So, yeah, we should have the, exactly the time that we need to do it. And as I always say, and I keep saying, I will say that for the rest of my life until my last breath. This is only practice. It doesn't take much brain. It's just uh, practice, 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 practice. Naturally, there are people with a gift. They can get there much faster than others. But anybody can get to my level. It's just practice. Nothing but practice. You don't need to start when you are 11. As I said to my class, my mother started doing it when she was 60 something, 61, 62. Never touched glass in her life. And she ended up uh, at age 70 uh, doing production of miniatures, like those teeny tiny miniatures, the things that I make like this. My mother was making them. And she made goblets that were this tall. And she started when she was 62, 63. So, and she doesn't come from a Venetian family, okay? As I told you. So next year, the guest conference is going to be in Murano. You're all invited to come. They asked me to do a demo. I think I'm going to do it. And that demo is going to be a piece finished from beginning to the end, not like here in, uh, in three years. <laughs> well, next summer I'm going to do the stem, and then we're going to put together everything. Well, I need to ask Amy if we can do it, another one uh, next week. But next week there is uh, our dearest uh, Mr. Uh, Yeneski. How do you say? What did he say? How do you pronounce his name? Yeneski, he said. So he's going to do one of his hollow sculpture. It takes also a little bit of brain, because if you don't have any brain, or you don't apply your brain. And they became very good glass blowers. Some actually became excellent glass blowers, but their brain was, uh, for them, was just repetition, repetition. I could name some, but then I would create more enemies in Murano. I already have enough coming to the United <laughs> States. And so I don't want to have, I'm going to have a hitman waiting for me next year. <laughs> But, uh, you know, because it's true, it's repetition. You look, uh, but as they say, monkey sees, monkey does, right? But you're still a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so you would like to get a little bit more than a monkey. And in Italy, in Murano, there were, there were many people that were uh, at that level, at the monkey level, no? So they were, they became uh, pretty decent. Good glass blowers, but the brain was still the brain of a monkey. So, and uh, so not only you couldn't have a conversation about anything, but uh, they learned from, a to M, 
and they couldn't get further than him because their brain didn't say, oh, if I, instead of doing it this way, I do it that way, I can get from M to N and maybe to the next letter. Now so, That's all right. <laughs> I didn't name anybody. Plus, many of those are, are dead or on their way to the tomb. So, yeah. So I'm lowering. You see, I'm blowing. So did you see how I heat it up? I didn't heat it up just on the side. I had the bubble that was more round. So to get it to expand more uniformly, what do you do? You heat up side, center, side, center, side. So when you blow and push, not only the glass on the side comes out and becomes thin, but also the two faces. That's why the same happens with the foot. If you make a, a foot, the bubble for the foot, and you push in, and then you want to reheat it and make it even lower and, and blow it while you're doing, you have to heat up face, side, face, side, face, okay? So we're going to do it just... Oh, perfect. Time flies on the wings of Kronos. What a poetic expression, all right? So next year, to all the audience, I'm going to publish my first uh, book of poetry. So it'll be, I'm serious, I'm not joking. So it'll be on, uh, I'll be advertising on Facebook and online. Can I say something else in selling? <laughs> no, I'm serious. So because uh, finally my kids uh, are out of school and I can dedicate to myself to more to art than production. So I'm not going to put in a volume and I'm not going to finish the bottom because we have uh, only a few minutes to go. But I'm going to show you how to open something a little bit bigger just for the fun of it. And this is off center actually, but we don't care. It's just a demo. As famously Robert Mickelson said. Huh? Just a demo. It's just a demo. Yeah, then you tap it if you have any chips inside. Now, uh, I'm going to show you how to flare this. Uh, this torch doesn't have enough power to completely uh, open it all the way flat, but it's strong enough and powerful enough to open it. Okay. So what do you do? Instead of opening it from the side or flaring it from the side, you flare it from the top like this, okay? When you have something big. Okay, oh, ah, I got it, okay? And there you are. So it didn't come out very well, but that's more or less how you do it, okay? And uh, with that, I think we're off, uh, out of time almost. Conclude the demo for today. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to show you how to make the cane and to fold the cane into a stem and put it together. But We'll do it next summer if they invite me back and we're going to finally put together the three things. Hey, thank you very much for coming uh, and watching. And uh, email me if you want. My, my email is uh, santiniemilio.gmail.com with questions or uh, 
uh, ask uh, the people at the Corny online and come and take classes here because it's the greatest place in the world to take classes. Thank you very much.